I wanted to uh, say a few words about education as a normative em enterprise. Um, and that will uh, lead us to the importance of, of a democratic ethic as a frame for thinking about education. can begin with the idea that education is an intentional activity. That is, it's purposeful and forward-looking. That is, when we educate, when we seek to educate another person, a student, a child, a youth, etc., we're, uh, we have a purpose. We intend to do something. We intend to affect that person in a certain way or those persons in certain ways, right? We're not just hanging out. Um, we, it's, we have a purpose, we have aims, we have goals, we have ob objectives. We're, we're intending to do something. So, uh, and that's one of the defining features of an education, is that it is intentional. It's an intentional activity. It's purposeful. And being intentional and purposeful, education is value-driven. That is, our purposes and our intentions uh, reflect what we value. Um, and in, in, in important ways, education um, involves a, a choices about a way of life, about what the good life perhaps is. Uh, it involves... Uh, Education constitutes a basic public good, and uh, the choice of purpose and intention, goals, aims, objectives, uh, requires, therefore, ethical and political justification. So, um, it's normative uh, in that sense, that it's an intentional activity, and being an intentional activity, it is value-driven, and being value-driven, it requires justification. This is uh, true in terms of uh, what, what we can conceive as the purpose of education. What should be the purpose of education? What values and in turn social purposes should drive education and why? Should it be, for example, economic development? Should that be the driver? Should it be cultural preservation? Uh, should it be um, uh, freedom, liberation of some kind, um, et cetera? What, what, should it be peace? Should it be war? Uh, what, should drive, what, what social purpose and therefore what value should drive education? And, and therefore what should be the purpose of education? and who should decide what the values and purposes should be. Um, if we look at the curriculum, uh, any, any curriculum is also value-driven. A curriculum answers the question what knowledge, skills, and dispositions are most valuable. And should the, uh, should the curriculum reflect our most fundamental values? So the curriculum as the content of the educational experience is also value-driven and also connected to purpose, to social and individual purpose. Pedagogically, how we teach, what should be the method of our teaching? Uh, this is in part a psychological, there are psychological dimensions to how we teach, of course, but also uh, how we teach uh, defines a particular kind of relationship, a very important relationship between teacher and student. And that is grounded, perhaps, uh, in, uh, in our values, what we value as a people. What kind of influence we want to have on our students is reflective of our values and our purposes as, uh, as a society. Um, so, so, for example, should the value of self-reflection and deliberation be actualized in our pedagogy? Um, education is, a, is fundamentally, uh, a, as a primary social good, is, uh, is a question of equity. Um, the distribution of education is, uh, is a basic question 
of justice, a, a basic matter of justice, of distributive justice, and what constitutes a just distribution of educational resources, uh, what should constitute a just uh, distribution of educational resources. Um, diversity. Um, human diversity, cultural and otherwise, is, uh, is a fundamental uh, fact of human existence, and which is, uh, um, fl which flourishes under uh, forms, uh, free forms of political organization. Uh, how, how should we respond to that diversity, that pluralism? Should we encourage it? Should we disencourage it? Should we try to wipe it clean? Should we assimilate? Should we celebrate? Uh, what is our what is a justifiable response to diversity in general, but also diversity in, uh, in education? How should schools and educational systems respond to our diversity as a people? And we're very diverse. Um, and do individuals have a right to have their culture recognized, for example? Is that a fundamental democratic right? How do we, uh, these are fundamental questions about education that are normative questions, right? They're normative in the sense that they're questions about what should be, and uh, normative in the sense that they're reflective of our fundamental values as a people, as a society, and as individuals. So how do we, how do we answer these, que these normative questions about education? Should we just leave it to someone else? To authority? Unre should we unreflectively conform to some authority? Or should we, as citizens and as professionals, also uh, engage in these questions reflectively and uh, engage in deliberation about them? And of course, my answer is we should reflect and deliberate about them. Um, and therefore, to reflect and deliberate. Um, there are, and this I think is, comes out of fundamentally out of co uh, what we know about human cognition and human thought psychologically, is that uh, human beings interpret and understand experience, including values and moral and political principles, through frames of reference. We think, value, and choose within frameworks of discourse and understanding. We don't think in the up, in out of out of thin air. Right? We need a context. Yeah. We need a frame. We can't, the picture isn't decipherable without a frame. We need a frame. Human, we, it's a necessity. We need a frame of reference to think about things. And therefore, we need a frame of reference to uh, reflect on these <coughs> fundamental educational questions of purpose, of pedagogy, of curriculum, of equity, of diversity. We need a frame of reference. What should that frame of reference be? What frame should we use? We, we psych, psychology and sociology provide us, various disciplines provide us with various frames of, of reference to think about these things. And they're very important. They're, they are very important frames of reference. One very potent frame of reference, however, is, uh, is democracy. And that's the, the meaning of, uh, or the reason why we perhaps are interested in thinking about democracy, because it provides us with a frame of reference. And its values and principles provide us uh, a way of thinking about, uh, a way of defining, a way of thinking about, a way of talking about, a way of reflecting on, a way of debating and deliberating, uh, these questions. So that, so we're, we're going to turn to uh, a democratic ethic in order to have a frame of reference. And the claim here is that uh, the, the de democracy as a frame of reference is very fundamental from a social point of view. It, it, def it, it may define the basic structure of a society. 
and that's uh, that provides a very potent way of thinking. And given, as we'll see from John Rawls' thoughts, given reasonable pluralism, given the fact that we will disagree and that we have different uh, points of view on many issues, on many issues we'll not, we'll not agree, religious, cultural, uh, even philosophical, uh, moral issues, we, there'll be disagreement in our society. What, what under, uh, given that, given that fact of, dis, of pluralism and disagreement, how do we stay together as a society? How do we stay together politically? And Rawls will offer a democratic frame of public reason that we could all agree to, perhaps, in an overlapping consensus about basic principles that we would all agree to within our own points of view, within our own comprehensive doctrines, cultural, religious, moral, that we could agree, yes, we should treat each other uh, as, uh, we, we, should, we should respect each other as free and equal. Yes, we should uphold these standards of equity as a society. Yes, we, should, uh, we shouldn't do certain things to each other that we all agree to, even though we might have different reasons for agreeing to. These are a set political principles that we could all agree to that allows us then to uh, talk to each other and allows us to uh, deliberate with each other. And it all allows us to accept uh, each other even though we disagree. Even though we not, might not get our way on a particular issue, we can say, okay, even though I disagree, it's, your position is reasonable, and I'll, I'll go along. And maybe next time I'll get my way. Uh, <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. 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 Compromise. A reasonable, uh, reasonable disagreement. Even though there's an expectation that you get your turn next, you would say that's compromise. I think a compromise is like, Ali, Ali, and the crew, we're all good. Well, there might be different kinds of compromise. Uh, we, can, um, we can agree, well, what, one form of, of compromise it, and it's a lo it's a lower form of compromise. Is that okay? I'll let you get your way this time, but next time I'm getting my way. And that would still be considered. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll just wait it out. I'm just going to wait here. You know, and um, it, in Latin it's called a, a modus vivendi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we. Okay. We, I'm resigned. To this arrangement until uh, conditions are better for me and I'll get my way when conditions are better. That's a weak form of compromise and a weak uh, form of stability, mm -hmm. social stability. If, if a society is based upon a modus vivendi, its stability is weak. It can fracture very easily. What, uh, and we'll talk about this more as we proceed. Um, a, a, more, a stronger form of compromise and a stronger form of stability is when we uh, we agree on basic principles, and uh, as long as uh, what follows from those principles are uh, we see as consistent with the principle, then we are compromising. Yes, I can see why you want to. Uh, build the bridge over there, and it's consistent. It's not unreasonable. You're, it's not a violation of our fundamental principles. I would build a bridge over there, but I, I'll go along with building of the bridge over here because it's not going to violate me in a fundamental way. Well, that's not the best explanation, but uh, we'll, we'll get into that. That's a very important element of a 
of the stability of a democratic society is how, and one of the chief uh, questions that we'll be asking is how, what, uh, what, uh, what, um, what, what produces stability in the society, in a democratic society, given its uh, propensity towards disagreement and its propensity towards uh, pluralism. How do we hang together? How do we have unified social relations? How do we keep on cooperating even though we are in disagreement? But the, uh, the, basic, the basic idea I wanted to introduce here is that uh, education is a normative enterprise in part. And being a normative enterprise, it uh, is, uh, requires justification. You have to have good reasons. You have to be able to articulate your reasons. And those reasons must be reasonable. And in order to do that, you need a frame of reference, a basic set of principles from which you uh, argue for uh, a particular more uh, precise, or more specific, rather, um, decision, approach, action. So how do we justify to each other as free and equal citizens? We're all free and equal. How do we justify certain, um, uh, certain courses of action uh, to each other, even though we, are, we might have very different ideas? The argument will be we need a frame of reference, we need a political frame that is comprised of a set of principles. And once we can, if we can agree on those principles, then we could have, uh, that define the structure of the society, then uh, that will uh, allow us to debate, to deliberate on and to decide various courses of action, in, in, including what kind of education we should have in our society.